Hey everybody, it's Julie, and today I'm going to talk about an uncomfortable but nearly universal subject, rejection. A lot of people ask me what's a typical number of rejections that an author can expect to receive, and there's honestly no real way of answering that question. It just it depends on too many variables, what you're submitting, where you're submitting, what kind of baseline you're starting from, and how fast you improve. There are so many elements that this depends on that there's no way I can tell you about a standard trajectory. That said, what's most important is that you keep writing and keep learning. You can learn from reading the work of people you'd like to be peers with one day, you can learn from practicing and learning new techniques, and you can learn from listening to criticism, especially, sometimes, the criticism in your rejections. Anyway, just to give you a little picture of how I've been approaching publishing over the years and how much rejection I've dealt with, I'm going to give you a little timeline of my experience. Okay, so I wrote my first book when I was 14, and um, we won't talk about that. I never did a major edit of that book, and I never tried to approach publishing with it, and then throughout the rest of high school I just wrote like mm, partial manuscripts and little stories that I did nothing with except just share with my friends. The first piece I ever submitted anywhere was a novel I wrote when I was 18. Uh, it was a modern fantasy novel called The House That Ivy Built, and I felt like it was my first real novel. So after about a year of editing it, showing it to friends and critique partners, I felt like I was ready to start approaching publishing. So I did some research, and I found out that, of course, most major publishers require you to have agency representation before you're allowed to approach them. And for some reason that put me off. I didn't even consider trying to get an agent at that time. So I looked for the largest publishers that would allow me to approach them without an agent. And uh, I ended up picking out one nice science fiction and fantasy publisher, which was Bain Books. And I submitted my book to them. And I got my very first uh, real rejection letter in 1998. Uh, of course, it's a form letter, and uh, they sent it to me after it had been under consideration for, you know, a year. And of course, I didn't know it at the time, but of course I was nowhere near ready to publish, and it probably should have told me something that just a couple of months after I had sent it, I was already uh, regretting that I had sent it in because I had, I had improved since then. So um, that was my first time uh, dealing with the publishing industry, and uh, of course I was expecting to receive a rejection letter, but you know it still hurts to get your first one, and um, you know I kept it in a nice little envelope with other rejection slips, and it soon had more company. So let me switch gears a little bit and talk about short stories. Uh, that was the next thing I was trying to get published because I didn't write a novel that I felt like was ready for the publishing industry for a long time, so I started trying to send out short stories. And uh, I'm not even exaggerating, I was trying to get a published short story on and off for around 10 years, and um, that may be due to a couple of things. Number one, I don't think I'm actually that good of a short story writer, I specialize in long stories. Uh, but also because I was approaching only publishers that pay their authors, and this is not because I was all about money, but uh, most of the time if a magazine offers some kind of payment for their author, then uh, they're at least in a little bit more of a stable position, and you can expect that magazine to continue to exist and continue to host your work, so uh, I didn't want to be submitting to magazines that were going to go under within a couple of years or a couple of months even, so I actually only approached uh, short story magazines that did pro or semi-pro payment and of course that tends to mean that their standards are higher so I did get lots of rejection letters many of them were just form letters and occasionally I received personalized feedback so let me just take you through my stats here I think the first story I ever sent out was a science fiction short story called Mother's Day and I got one form rejection on it and I never sent that story out again. It is my opinion as of today that that story is not viable, so I'm not trying to get that one published anymore. Uh, the next one that I sent out is a short story called The Curse, 
and it received five form rejections and one personalized rejection over the years. I actually still think that this story has merit, but I'm going to rewrite a good chunk of it and probably try to send it out again in the future. I, the next one that I wrote was called The Mother, and uh, I got two personalized rejections on that one and one form rejection. And um, I, I don't think that I'll be trying to get this one published again. Um, I had a very high opinion of it back when I first wrote it, but I, I think that it's kind of sappy. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one I sent out was a contemporary story called No Longer Junior. I got one form rejection for it. I never sent it out again. I don't think it's that good of a story. Um, the next one I sent out was a short story called Wind, and actually it wasn't all that short. It's almost a novella, but uh, I've received two personalized rejections for that one. Uh, I think it's an interesting story, but I don't know that it's really the kind of thing that could find a home. I'm unsure about that one still. Uh, the next story that I have stats on is a uh, modern fantasy story called Just Like Stephen. I've received five form rejections on that one and three personalized rejections. Uh, I, I think this one may still have a chance. Maybe I'll just polish it up and get it out there again. Uh, I have a short story called On the Inside. It has been out to an editor once, received one personalized rejection, and based on that feedback, I think I want to completely rewrite it from a different character's perspective, so we'll see what happens with that one. I have a short story called Baby Talk. It's received one personalized rejection and two form rejections. It's kind of a very short little ditty, about 650 words, and uh, maybe one day it'll find a home. It's quite an old story, though. Uh, okay, the next one is called Protector Cat. Uh, it's kind of a surreal, strange sort of mo modern science fiction fantasy kind of story. It's received three form rejections. Nobody seems to like it. It's pretty experimental, so maybe one day I'll find the right home for it. Um, more recently, I have written a short story called In Love With Love. This one's been rejected a whole bunch of times. I've received one personalized rejection and nine form rejections for it. Um, I don't know if maybe there's something wrong with this story, but I have also sent it out to quite a lot of places, so um, it's, uh, it's possible that it, it'll still find a good place to live. Uh, next, I have a short story called Uncle Avery's Garden. Uh, it's a modern contemporary kind of sappy story. It's received a personalized rejection and a form rejection in its lifetime. Um, and then a short story called Her Mother's Child. I have received one form rejection for it. I've received one personalized rejection and the third time I sent it out it got accepted. That story will be published in Kaleidotrope. And uh, then finally a short story called Your Terms. I sent it out once and it got accepted the first place I sent it. So in the future I'm going to try writing some more short stories and hopefully there will be a few more stats in this acceptances column. Form rejections are usually the ones that'll say, thank you for submitting, but we will not be using this story at this time. Sometimes they'll say this is not a fit for our magazine. Every once in a while you get an extremely condescending one, such as the form letter I got from Asimov. <laughs> Uh, this remains a magazine that is extremely difficult to get into, of course, but um, they have a, a particularly awful <laughs> form letter. It outlines three or four reasons why you might have been rejected. All of them are pretty uh, talk down to you as a writer and say that you probably think your story is very unique, but it probably isn't because we've seen everything and suggests that you may have spelling errors. And then it says, finally, your story may have been rejected not because it lacked a new idea or was misspelled or mispunctuated or because the writing was not professional enough, but simply because it failed to rise above the other 849 seen that month. Thanks, Asimov. Anyway, personalized rejections are usually a sign that you're closer, although some editors provide personal feedback on every story they receive, and then other editors only respond in form letters if they're rejecting. 
some of the comments I've had in my personalized rejections will cite a specific reason why they're not going to take the story, such as a problem with the pacing, or they don't think that their magazine is the right demographic for it, or they didn't connect with the character, etc. But the point is, I submitted and was rejected over 40 times before I got an offer on a short story. And then both of the offers I got up at so this point happened in the same week, so there you go. I'm going to keep submitting and see what happens. As for my book submissions, here's how that went. I actually got representation for the first manuscript I ever queried, but it's not quite as simple as all that. The first time I sent out my fantasy novel, Bad Fairy, I received, um, I sent it out to seven agents. I received three rejections and four partial requests, and two of those partial requests turned into full requests, but they were ultimately rejections primarily because the book was extremely long, and uh, based on the rejection feedback, I decided that that story was going to need to be shortened if I was ever going to have a chance with it. So I actually took a break from that book, and I started writing a different book, trying to make it shorter. And that was the book that, when I started sending it out, I got very good at dealing with rejection. I sent that query out over 50 times over the course of several years, and I received 30 rejections. Um, I received 20 no responses, because sometimes agents say that if they do not respond to you, that means no. And I only got two partial manuscript requests, neither of which turned into a full manuscript request on that book. And having taken into account some of the personalized comments that I got very occasionally from the agents, it seems as though the setting of my story was off-putting because I had a young adult story happening in college. And um, new adult is now a genre that is exploding in the marketplace, but it was unheard of during the time that I was querying this manuscript. That book would probably do better in today's market, so um, sometimes it's not anything wrong with your book or your writing or your query letter itself. Sometimes it just means that it's not a book that the agents think that they could sell. So I'm hoping that that was the reason behind the lack of interest at that time. But um, having written a fairly successful query letter before that, I assumed I knew how to query. So it may have just been a problem with the content of my book. So I went back to that previous book, and I rewrote it as a trilogy so that the first book would be shorter and more manageable. I ended up getting 20 rejections on that query. I got 11 no responses, and I got um, one 100-page partial request and three full manuscript requests on it. And I did end up signing with one of the agents that had requested a full manuscript. As of the making of this video, that book is still on submission, looking for a book deal, and uh, you're not really supposed to discuss the details of your submission while that whole process is still going on, so maybe I'll be able to share some of those details with you after the fact, assuming that it does find a home. But for now, I will just uh, switch gears and tell you about my other book, which was uh, a nonfiction book, and how that whole thing went for me. Um, since it, of course, is a whole different thing to try to sell nonfiction, what I was offering to agents at that point was a proposal. So overall, I ended up offering my proposal to 28 agents and two publishers. With smaller publishers, you can usually approach them directly without an agent, and since I wasn't expecting a really big book deal for this one, uh, I was content to approach the smaller publishers without an agent in those cases. So I sent that query out. I ended up getting 11 agent rejections. I got 14 non-responses. And I ended up getting three agents who requested my proposal. And also one of those two publishers asked to see the proposal, but they never responded to me after I provided it. So one of those three agents offered representation and I signed with her. And then we went on submission and she only offered that book to six publishers. And out of those six, all of them wanted to see it except one. So out of the five publishers who requested the proposal, I got three offers and I ended up signing with the publisher 
that we thought offered the best deal and now that book is coming out in September 2014. As you can see, this was not a short road or an easy road. All told, with everything I've sent out, I have been rejected over a hundred times. Now I only have a handful of acceptances to show for all of this, but I am a published author and I got here by listening to what the rejection letters said, being willing to move on to another project if this wasn't the one for right now, and of course, not giving up. When you're looking to get your stuff out there, remember, a lot of agents, publishers, editors are going to say no to you, but it only takes one yes.